All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Tolentino. I am a vaccine ambassador at AgeGuide. I'm here today with my coworker, Katie, who is AgeGuide's other vaccine ambassador. So first of all, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Um, there is a lot of great information Katie and I are going to discuss, so I hope that everyone learns a new thing or two. Um, this is our agenda for today, which is split into two different parts. Part one, which I will be speaking on, consists of everything you want to know about vaccines. This is going to include the different types of vaccines, safety, potential side effects, access to those vaccines, and then some data statistics about vaccination rates. Part two, which Katie will be speaking on, includes information about why you should get vaccinated. It's going to detail different things, such as who is the most at risk for severe COVID-19, um, those who have already received the vaccine, things you can do once you're fully vaccinated. And of course, we are going to touch on COVID-19 variants as well. So we're just gonna forge ahead and get into part one of this presentation, which again, will focus on everything you wanna know about vaccines. So currently there are three different vaccine types available in the US. The first vaccine is the Pfizer vaccine, which is patented by the Pfizer BioNTech company. This vaccine consists of two mRNA doses given between an interval of 21 days. The first dose helps your body recognize the virus and then prepares your immune system. The second dose is a booster shot, which essentially strengthens that immune system response. And overall research has shown that the Pfizer vaccine has a 95% vaccine efficacy. The second vaccine is the Moderna vaccine, which is patented by a biotechnology company. Again, two mRNA doses given between an interval of 28 days. It's very similar to the Pfizer vaccine in the way that the first dose is an exposure to the virus, and then the second dose is a booster shot. Overall, there is 94.5% vaccine efficacy for the Moderna. The third type of vaccine is the Janssen vaccine, patented by Johnson & Johnson. This vaccine is a little different from the other two just because it is an AD26 viral vector vaccine that requires only one dose. And then the resulted vaccine efficacy ranges from 57 to 72%. To put this in perspective a little bit more, I just wanna note that the flu shot, for those of you that get it every year, has a vaccine efficacy of about 40 to 50%. With that said, all three of these COVID-19 vaccines have a higher effectiveness than the flu shot. As with anything, there are some cautions to getting the COVID vaccine, regardless of which type it is. Health providers generally recommend that if you have a history of severe allergic reaction after a previous dose or to a certain ingredient of the vaccine, then you should exercise caution before you get vaccinated. If you are unsure if any of those cautions apply to you, please consult your doctor and your allergist. However, for most people, especially older adults, the risks of COVID and contracting the virus are much more concerning compared to the potential allergic reactions. Currently, severe allergic reactions are estimated to occur in about two to 11 cases per million doses. So in other words, for every million doses of the vaccine that are administered, only about two to 11 people will experience severe allergic reactions. So overall, a pretty rare occurrence. Next, we're going to jump in and talk about some potential side effects. Um, common side effects generally include low-grade fever, fatigue, headaches, body aches, and soreness at the injection site. Research and clinical trials provide strong evidence that side effects are manageable, short-term, and not severe. And then if the side effects become too uncomfortable, Tylenol and ibuprofen can help alleviate them. Once again, the side effects of the vaccine are very short-term, so typically they will only last about one to three days. On the other hand, research about those who actually contract COVID and the virus itself have shown that there are many long-term complications even after recovery. So that includes things like loss of taste, um, trouble breathing, pneumonia, blood clots, and additional viral or bacterial infections. Therefore, the side effects of the vaccine are small and short-term in comparison to the long-term effects of COVID even after recovery. As of right now, um, anyone ages 16 and up can get vaccinated. In addition to that, ages between 12 and 15 are cleared to get the Pfizer vaccine only with parent consent. 
I do quickly want to mention that vaccines are available to qualifying ages for free, regardless of immigration status. So Age Guide does know and recognize that cost and required documentation are often barriers for many health services. However, COVID vaccines are available for free, regardless of immigration status. So there are no social security numbers that are required for registration. In terms of where you can get vaccinated, the availability of vaccines depends on which county you live in. Generally, county health departments, Illinois Department of Public Health vaccine clinics, and local pharmacies are the places to go. Um, Age Guide also does offer assistance with homebound vaccines and transportation to and from vaccines if needed. Vaccines for homebound are intended for those with mobility restrictions, and then um, referrals for assistance with homebound vaccines and transportation to vaccines depends on, again, your county. So you can contact Age Guide um, for more specifics about vaccine appointments because we do have some knowledge about clinics, where they are located, and assistance with scheduling appointments. In addition to that, um, we do help with referrals to homebound administered vaccines and transportation for those in need. We work in conjunction with many local agencies to help provide homebound administered vaccines as well as transportation to and from those vaccine appointments. So now we're going to go ahead and discuss vaccination rates, starting with those in the U.S., all this data is taken from the US CDC COVID data tracker, um, and it's recent as of May 14th. For background reference, when we use the term fully vaccinated, it means that an individual has received both doses and a period of at least two weeks has passed after the second dose. This is just because two weeks is the amount of time it takes for that second dose of the vaccine to reach its full effectiveness. So with that said, Currently, about 36.2% of the total population in the U.S. is fully vaccinated. Not only that, 46.8% have received at least one dose. For the population that is 65 and older, about 72.1% of them are fully vaccinated. And then at least 84.2% have received their first dose. Next, we're going to discuss vaccination rates in Illinois. So again, all this data on this slide is taken from the Illinois Department of Public Health COVID-19 vaccine website, which is updated daily. These statistics are recent as of May 14th. So Age Guide started tracking and recording this data in March, and we have seen a steady upwards trend in administered doses of the vaccine. So this generally indicates that there's been successful vaccine uptake. However, vaccine efforts are going to continue at Age Guide just because we want to push the number of administered doses up in Illinois even more. So currently 10,229,330 doses of the vaccine have been administered in Illinois. About 36.81% of the total population in Illinois is fully vaccinated and about 81% 81 81 of the 65 and over population is fully vaccinated. So this is a graph of the total administered doses in Illinois. It's just a visual representation of the upwards trend that I just mentioned in the previous slide. Again, this data is recent as of May 14th as well. I do want to note that Age Guide up, updates the vaccine, the, the vaccine statistics every week as opposed to every day. Um, and then as mentioned before, we are currently at 10,229,330 total administered doses in Illinois. So Age Guide services eight different counties in the northeastern region of Illinois with a special focus on older adult populations. Therefore, we do pay special attention to the vaccination rates in our serviced counties for ages 65 and over. This data on the slide was taken from the IDPH Vaccine Administration website as of May 19th. So displayed here is the percentage of older adults 65 and older that are fully vaccinated in each county, and they're ordered from greatest to least. On the one side, we have Kendall County with a very high percentage of their 65 and over population fully vaccinated. And then we have Kankakee County on the other side of the scale. Something very important to consider is that although each county has a relatively high percentage of 65 and older populations that are fully vaccinated, it begs the question of why isn't it reaching 100%. Not only that, but there are some likely explanations that might account for the differences of fully vaccinated rates between these counties. 
For instance, some counties may have been allocated vaccines sooner than others, or might have been given a greater number of vaccines than others. In terms of important considerations, I did just want to discuss the larger implication of herd immunity. So herd immunity is defined as the pre-existing immunity of a high proportion of a population to resist the spread of an infectious disease. Um, and that's generally what we're trying to achieve as a nation, as well as worldwide. It's a form of indirect protection. And in theory, it makes the spread of a disease from person to person unlikely because such a large portion of the population is already protected. In the case of COVID-19, to achieve herd immunity as a population, health, health experts specify that we need to reach at least a 70 to 80% vaccination rate for the entire population. And then remember, going back to what I mentioned earlier, currently 36.2% of our population in the U.S. is fully vaccinated. As a segue into the next part of our presentation, I do just want to mention that there are overall many, many benefits to getting vaccinated. So next, Katie will talk a little bit about how there are both personal and collective gains that affect individuals as well as communities. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Hujar and I am the other, other COVID-19 ambassador with AgeGuide. Now that you know everything about the vaccine itself, the biggest question is, why should you get vaccinated? I will be taking you through a few slides as to why. So to start, who is at risk for severe COVID-19? As you've probably heard multiple times before, older adults ages 65 plus are considered one of the most vulnerable populations for contracting severe COVID-19. Severe COVID-19 can result in hospitalization, intensive care, the need for ventilators, and the worst case scenario, fatality. In addition, individuals with certain chronic medical conditions are also at high risk. Certain chronic medical conditions include, but are not limited to, heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, asthma, liver disease, high blood pressure, chronic lung disease, etc. So when you combine those two risk factors together, the at the most at-risk population for severe COVID-19 is older adults ages 65 plus that also have certain chronic medical conditions. Variants, what are they and where are they? So what is a variant? A variant is a subtype of the actual virus itself. It is genetically distinct from the main virus, but not enough to be classified as something else. There are multiple variants, but some are found in the US, such as the United Kingdom variant, the Brazilian variant, the South African variant, and a few variants that were both found in California. Um, I do want to emphasize, though, that there is strong evidence that these vaccines will fight against the variants as well. Therefore, you should protect yourself and others by getting fully vaccinated. So who has received the, va uh, received the vaccine? Just um, a few examples for you. Um, the current and all the former living presidents have received it. Dolly Parton, Dr. Fauci, the Dalai Lama, and Pope Francis have all gotten um, fully vaccinated with two doses of either Pfizer or Moderna. So what can you do once you're fully vaccinated? Fully vaccinated people can visit with other vaccinated persons indoors without masks or social distancing visit with unvaccinated persons who are at low risk for severe COVID-19 indoors without masks or social distancing, uh, travel domestically or internationally without testing or quarantine unless required by local guidelines, and refrain from COVID testing. This information is for those who are fully vaccinated and only applies to general public settings that are outside of healthcare. So this does not apply to hospitals, nursing home, or long-term care facilities. Individuals are not considered to be fully vaccinated until at least two weeks from their second dose. Recently, the CDC announced that fully vaccinated people can stop wearing masks indoor and outdoor unless required by local businesses or company guidelines. I would just like to point out on a personal note that my wife and Caitlin have been fully vaccinated. So you are hearing all this information who, um, from people who have been through the process personally. So if you have any questions, um, Age Guide has COVID-19 ambassadors such as myself and Caitlin that work every day that can assist you with such things as uh, general questions you may have regarding COVID-19 or the vaccine, help you find a vaccine location and time slot, 
helping you find transportation to a vaccine location and assisting you with a homebound vaccine for you or a loved one. Um, so to keep in touch, we have a lot of tools and resources to help you keep up with the latest on what we're doing and what's important to other adults and their caregivers. I want to encourage you to engage with us on social media. As soon as we end this webinar, if you're not already, please follow Age Guide on Facebook and Twitter. There you will find we post a lot of useful articles, resources, notices about events in the area, lots of useful information on our social media. Then there's also our monthly newsletter called The Aging Report that's stuffed with useful information. You can sign up for that by going to our website under News and Events, and you can sign up to get them sent to your inbox. Um, these things are a great way for all of us to collaborate to advocate for older adults and to stay in touch. This concludes our presentation. We hope you found all of this information helpful.